Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. And we're looking at the Moabite stone, which is also known as the Misha Stele. And Misha, he was a king of Moab, about 840 um, BC. And the reason this stone is so fascinating is because it has some references to biblical characters and it really shows the authenticity of scripture. First of all, it mentions Omri. And those of you that uh, you know are acquainted with the Bible, you know who Omri was. He was the father of Ahab, that notorious, terrible king. And then also, I'll read you a couple other things here. The inscription seems to parallel an episode in 2 Kings 3, where Jehoram of Israel makes an alliance with Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and an unnamed king of Edom, south of Judah, to put down his rebe rebellious vassal, Mesha, whom this is named after. The three kings have the best of the campaign until Mesha, in desperation, sacrifices to his god, Chemosh, either his eldest son or the eldest son of the king of Edom. The sacrifice turns the tide. There came great wrath against Israel, and Amisha apparently achieves victory. So, fascinating there. But also, another thing that has really come out just fairly recently is the reference to the house of David on the Moabite stone, or the Misha Steli. A steli is just something, an imprinted uh, piece of uh, granite type thing. And uh, so, the legible letters are BTWD with the square brackets representing a damaged space that probably contained just one letter. This is not universally accepted and uh, on and on and so forth. So in 2001, Anson Rainey proposed that a two-word phrase in the 12 RLDWDH should be read as a reference to the altar hearth of David, one of the, the towns captured by Misha. So you have Misha that he is listed in the Bible. You have Omri listed in the Bible. You have references to three kings that are mentioned in the Bible. And then most probably it's also mentioning David. And this is all from 840 BC. And so again, let God be true, every man a liar. This is further proof, the authenticity of scripture. You know, you study this every page. It's just filled with uh, 100 percent verifications of its absolute authenticity. Talk with you later. God bless you.